Free agency is the next big event for the NFL, and I'm shocked they don't have a centralized location for it, like the draft. At this very moment, though, the list of impending free agents is astronomical. If this is your first NFL offseason, let me bring you up to speed on how this shit actually works. Right now, we see this giant list of exciting players who can change teams. These three letters, UFA, mean unrestricted free agent, which indicates that a player can sign with any team once the new league year begins March 13th. But, and there is one giant but, a bunch of these dudes won't actually become free agents. For example, the Chiefs Chris Jones is slated to become a free agent but I have no faith in anything holy that God will allow the Chiefs to lose someone as good as Chris Jones. He won't hit the market. Two things are happening right now though for every team in the league with their unrestricted free agents. First, teams are negotiating new contracts to keep some of these players. Second, teams are deciding which players they can slap with the franchise tag to keep them on the roster for one more season. The tag then allows teams more time to negotiate a long-term deal to keep that player uh, that they have tagged. What I call the next couple weeks are free agent purgatory because we're just guessing which guys will become free agents. And as all of us fans who didn't see our team win a Super Bowl, we're looking to some of these guys to become available so they can save our teams like football Jesus is. Today I want to identify which players will likely become free agents. <laughs> do you like coffee? Of course you fucking do. Unless you're some sort of weird psychopath who doesn't need stimulants to get through your pathetic day. Well, then I got, I got the answer for you with my coffee company, benchwarmerbrew.com. That's right. Go there now and buy my coffee. Just to give you an idea of how much movement there is in the NFL every offseason, I have no clue how many free agents there will be this year, but Pro Football Focus has named their top 200 free agents. So there's at least 200. CBS Sports has a team-by-team -team list of every player who could hit the market, and it's a lot. Typically, very few of the top 20 players initially listed actually leave their respective teams. And as much shit as we like to give NFL GMs for being dense, stupid, dumb, moronic, brainless, dunce-like, simple, thick-headed, dim, obtuse, half-witted, slow, idiotic, foolish, tiny dick, what have yous, they're actually pretty good at understanding which Players are key to their success moving forward. GMs are typically considering a bunch of things when deciding who to franchise tag, give new contracts to, and let hit the market. It's gonna be how that player affects the salary cap moving forward, if they can presumably replace that player in the draft, injury history, and age. Any of those things can tip the scale for a team. Now, Pro Football Focus's top five free agents are Chris Jones, Kirk Cousins, Jags edge rusher, Josh Allen, Bengals receiver, hi T Higgins, and Panthers edge defender, Brian Burns. I don't think any of these guys will actually be free agents, which sucks because we all fucking want them. Brian Burns and the Panthers, though, are apparently not close in contract negotiations. Burns reportedly wants $30 million per season, sandwiching him between Nick Bosa and TJ Watt in annual salary. The Rams uh, supposedly offered multiple first-round picks for him last season, and it's expected Carolina slaps him with the franchise tag. Burns also tweeted, keep pounding the Panther slogan to signal to fans he wants to return. Chris Jones, albeit inebriated at the Chiefs' victory parade, said he's coming back. I ain't going nowhere, baby! Which is a bit odd, considering he held out to start the season for a slight pay bump in 2023. The Bengals are poised to hit T. Higgins with the franchise tag and let Tyler Boyd test free agency. The Jaguars can front load Josh Allen's contract with cap hits, knowing they have time to work out a deal with Trevor Lawrence. That leaves us with Kirk Cousins. He's a bit of a wild card, but only because I'm not really sure what the Vikings want to do. Kirk has indicated he wants to return to Minnesota, but Minnesota has to pay Justin Jefferson, and for whatever reason, I get the feeling the Vikings believe they can upgrade the quarterback spot in the draft sitting at pick 11. 
And now we're, what, six minutes into this video and I still haven't mentioned a player who will be available? Well, I'll start with wide receivers, okay? Mike Evans, Gabe Davis, Hollywood Brown, Calvin Ridley all have real chances to become free agents. I don't think there's any chance uh, the Indianapolis Colts let receiver Michael Pittman leave the building, and I think he would be the best available receiver if he did hit the market. He just had his best season as a pro, catching 109 balls. For Anthony Richardson's sake, Pittman must be there. And we watched Josh Downs and Alec Pierce make progress this season. He's the number one guy, though, in a blossoming core of ball grabbers. The Buccaneers will likely use their franchise tag on all-pro safety Antoine Winfield Jr., Mike Evans is going to command a lot of money, and the Buccaneers need to pay Baker Mayfield or rise the dough <laughs> to get him to return. Rise the dough for Baker Mayfield. That's right, rise the dough. That's the one I'm going down with today. Open up, eat it, eat it. Now Evans is heading into his 11th season and has never not had a thousand yard performance and hauled in 13 touchdowns with Baker. Evans does have one Super Bowl ring, but if his top goal is to win another one, he will leave Tampa. The Chiefs need him, and I predict that's where he goes. And what he does in the red zone alone will give Kansas City the three-peat they are chasing. Gabe Davis is almost certainly leaving Buffalo, which blows. He posted what felt like a very long goodbye message on Instagram, and the Bills are going to have to get very creative to free up cap space. Not just if they wanted to keep Gabe, but if they want to feel the team in 2024. Gabe Davis isn't necessarily the most consistent wide receiver, but he's a dangerous home run hitter. He's also a little wacky. <laughs> which is why I think the New York Jets would be smart to bring him in. They need a dynamic veteran playmaker opposite Garrett Wilson. Gabe would click with Aaron Rodgers. Again, wacky. Sure, we all believe Devontae Adams will somehow find a way to be a Jet next season, but he's in the middle of a $140 million contract. Only a trade can move him, and the Raiders could get an insane haul if that's what they wanted to do, which I only see happening if they cannot get a quarterback and their season is over before the trade deadline. Calvin Ridley may become a free agent and early signs are pointing him to rejoining the Falcons, the team that drafted him. But if he enjoys having the ball thrown his way, he could give the Lions a boost at wideout. If the Jags decide to re-sign Ridley, they would owe the Falcons a second round pick and I don't see them using that kind of asset on a 29 year old receiver in a deep receiving class, even if he is coming off a thousand yard season. Then there's Hollywood Brown, who to me feels like a receiver who will never reach his full potential. He needs to be a number two guy to thrive. And there's a chance the cards keep him because he would be the number two guy after they draft Marvin Harrison Jr. with pick number four. But with 13 draft picks, the Cardinals can take two ball catchers in this draft and not overpay at the position. And finally for receivers, we have Darnell Mooney, who may be the best value wide receiver free agent. Some places inflate your stats and some are like an anchor on your totals. And Chicago is one of those places and they don't inflate shit, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I'd like to see Mooney end up in a wide open offense that's not Kansas City. Although, who wouldn't want to reunite with Matt Nagy? Moving on to the position nobody values, running backs. The running back I was most certain would be leaving his team is now the biggest mystery for me. Josh McDaniels and Dave Zeitgeist or whatever didn't pick up Raiders thrasher Josh Jacobs fifth year option last off season. But now that Antonio Pierce is running the show, I think Jacobs has a good chance to go back to Vegas, especially considering how crowded the running back market will be in free agency. But if he does test the market, I think he's the best option. Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, Tony Pollard, Austin Eckler, DeAndre Swift, and Zach Moss can all be had. I think the best value player on this list is Zach Moss. He's 26 years old, so one of the younger ones available, has the least amount of wear and tear on his body, and proved with Indy last season that he's a very good back. 
He averaged 4.3 yards per carry, had five touchdowns, and 794 yards on just 183 attempts. He didn't fumble once, and both times he rushed for over 100 yards in a single game this season were the only games he got more than 20 carries. And his century performances came against the Ravens and the Titans, two incredible defensive fronts. King Henry is changing teams, and I think the Cowboys will inquire, but the Baltimore Ravens are also supposedly interested in the King's services, but as you can see by all of the gold names on this depth chart, the Ravens have a lot of key free agents to consider. But based on no source really, more so my gut, Jerry Jones saying he's willing to go all in means Derrick Henry's already a cowboy in my brain. Rarely would I suggest getting older at the running back position, but the Ravens also have J.K. Dobbins, who has been tormented by terrible injuries like a character in any of the fucking Saw movies, <laughs> and Gus Edwards set to be free agents. I love the idea of King Henry and Keaton Mitchell as the Ravens' uh, two backs. Henry may be 30, but he's the most reliable back in the league and hasn't had less than double digit touchdowns since 2017. It all depends, I think, on Henry's willingness to be flexible with his contract to go to Baltimore. That leaves Saquon Barkley as the guy who I think will win free agency from the running back position. The Giants will not tag Barkley. Now there's a small chance the Giants give Barkley a contract he, he wants, if they do that, then they don't have to take the $12 million cap hit that would come with the franchise tag. Knowing though that the Chargers and Austin Eckler are going to part ways, I think Barkley would be a great fit with the Chargers. But I want Barkley to do the heel turn and also sign with the Cowboys. <laughs> but since they have Henry in my head, give me Saquon to the Texans. Oh yeah, dear God, give me that. Austin Eckler is very interesting. He's 28, but he has been one of the best pass catching backs in the league. We watched Drew Tranquil leave the Chargers and then go win a Super Bowl with the Chiefs. I fear Eckler does the same. Although his skill set is what Sean Payton loves, Alvin Kamara had four straight seasons catching over 80 passes with Sean Payton calling the plays in New Orleans. Austin Eckler, come home to Colorado, baby. Please. Eckler's production did drop last season, but I think he's got two great years left in that little muscly body. Fine, quarterbacks. Honestly, this QB free agency period will feature a bunch of scrubs and Gardner Minshew. I believe Kirk Cousins will return to Minnesota. Baker Mayfield found a home in Tampa Bay. That leaves Ryan Tannehill. Jacoby Brissett, who I like, Mitch Trubisky, Terod Taylor, Sam Darnold, Drew Locke, Marcus Mariota, Joe Flacco, Josh Dobbs, and Jake Browning. I'd rather get a colonoscopy without sedation than have to endure a season with Ryan Tannehill, Mitch Trubisky, Sam Darnold, and Drew Locke as my starting QB. Now, Jake Browning played very well for a stretch there with the Bengals, but they would be wise to prioritize bringing him back. Joe Burrow has missed time with injuries in multiple seasons now. I expect him to be mostly healthy, but if he needs to rest, to say fully heal from a calf injury, you can be confident with Jake Browning behind him. Trust with your reserve QB is a huge asset and since he has that. If the Broncos avoid drafting a quarterback, I will rock with Gardner Minshew and only Gardner Minshew. Like Browning, though, I think Indy will push to keep him. Anthony Richardson's style of play makes him susceptible to injury. And who wants to let a pro bowler walk out the door, huh? As for the other guys, I literally do not care where they play. Justin Fields is a trade piece, not a free agent. We've talked about that a lot. And Russell Wilson may very well be a free agent. If he becomes one and Kirk Cousins does not, he's the best available option. Any team considering Russ will probably also consider trading for Fields. I just wanted to be over. Like just let me know if I'm getting traded. Russ is more appealing for a couple reasons. He will be very cheap for two seasons with the experience Fields doesn't have. Fields will require a contract extension or franchise tag at some point. Also, I think Wilson gives you a better chance to win games in the fourth quarter. He kind of plays his best with the game on the line. And we saw that specifically in the Broncos Bears game last season. Pittsburgh or Atlanta would be better with Russell Wilson. Again, I've already done videos on that. Now I'm not mentioning any offensive linemen today because 
I do not care about blocking. It is so boring. Keep it to yourself, because I don't care. So I'll go to another boring list. Free agent tight ends, not really inspiring. Headlined by Hunter Henry, Dalton Schultz, and Gerald Everett. If it gives you any idea how uh, deep this class is, Adam Troutman is ranked fifth among free agent tight ends by PFF. Noah Fant might be the best value tight end available uh, based on pure talent and age. He's young. Uh, you might say that if he couldn't figure out how to be a key contributor in Seattle, he's not going to do it anywhere, but he's still 26 and 500 yards per season at tight end is, isn't is nothing. Hunter Henry's approaching 30, but did have six touchdowns last season. I really like Dalton Schultz in Dallas, but I love him with CJ Stroud in Houston. The Texans approach to free agency is going to be different for the first time since, well, since we all thought Deshaun Watson was a gentleman. No longer will they be looking to sign 30 dudes to one-year deals. They have a future to build for, and I think that starts by keeping Schultz. Hunter Henry will be the most talented tight end available, and I see him going, going back, back, to Cali, Cali. back to the Chargers or maybe signing with the Commanders. Defense. There's a lot of dudes here. I'd love to see the Dolphins' Christian Wilkins break the bank. Considering he was the only great defender the Dolphins had that didn't get hurt, I'm assuming he's gonna be their top priority and hit with the tag. Safety Antoine Winfield Jr. getting tagged. Justin Matabuke possibly getting tagged. Bears corner Jalen Johnson going back to Chicago. The first key player, also a chief, who could hit the market is corner Legereus Sneed. Casey has done a nice job drafting corner talent. And I'm not just talking about Trent McDuffie and Sneed. Remember, they drafted Marcus Peters, Steven Nelson, and I hope Sneed leaves for literally anywhere and that they finally whiff on the position in the draft. The Chiefs and Ravens, uh, their defenses have a ton of starters who could possibly hit free agency. I mentioned Sneed and Chris Jones, but they have linebackers Drew Trainquell and Willie Gay slated to be free agents. One of, if not both of those players might be gone. It feels like we keep thinking everyone will want to go back to Kansas City on team-friendly deals just to keep winning, but some of these guys are gonna wanna get fucking paid. Now, I've seen zero mentions of Mike Pennell. Pennell is a free agent, has been in the league for 10 seasons, was on the Chiefs practice squad last season, activated week 15, and just was one of the most disruptive players on their defensive line in the Super Bowl. He's always been a depth player. He has never been paid, but should get a small bag to help a team that desperately needs help on the D-line, the Denver Broncos. I'd love to say which Ravens and Chiefs defenders leave, but there's so many, it's too hard to accurately predict. And in a surprise move, the Dolphins are gonna release Xavier Howard. If you're wondering why, it's because every other month somebody's accusing him of getting them pregnant or giving them an STD. So I think it's just become too much for the Dolphins to deal with. If you learn to just wrap it up or say go to Green Bay where all the women are already married and there's no nightlife, he might just be one of the best in the league. The Vikings, Daniil Hunter is the first top defender slated who I believe will change teams. Hunter is consistently and quietly dominant, notching 16 and a half sacks last year, and ESPM has him joining the Rams in free agency. If you can get Hunter on the other side of Byron Young and outside of Aaron Donald, that defense takes a huge step up. After a 10 sack season with the Jets last year, Bryce Huff is due for a payday around 20 mil per year. ESPN has him staying in New York with the Giants. Who doesn't want to go the Shohei Otani route and get a huge contract without having to move houses? Huff was honestly the most underappreciated defensive player, I think, in all of 2023. He led the Jets in pressures uh, from the edge and was the 15th best in pressures in the league from the edge. Then we've got CJ Gardner-Johnson. I want CJ Gardner uh, to stay with the Lions, but I also would like him in the AFC West with either Denver, Vegas, or the Chargers so he can talk shit to Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes twice a year. Doesn't even have to be my team, but that would be nice. If not, go back to Detroit, help them win a title. Honestly, CJ Johnson and Max Crosby both talking shit to Mahomes might be enough to finally break him. Then we've got Chase Young. 
who of course was a mid-season acquisition by the 49ers, was up and down in San Fran in their pass rush rotation. ESPN has him going to Baltimore, who's expected to lose both Justin Matabuke and Jadavian Clowney in free agency. Unless you read another report from ESPN that says Matabuke isn't going anywhere, I think Young is going to see a lack of interest in his services overall. Leonard Williams, why the hell would Seattle trade a second and fifth rounder for him and then not sign him? Some outlets have him going to the Bengals, which would make you think whoever wrote that thinks the Bengals won't be able to bring back DJ Reader. If Seattle does not get a deal done with Williams, they're officially back to being horrible at making trades. I think they pay Williams, but if he hits free agency, he will be highly sought after. Linebackers Jordan Brooks and Bobby Wagner are uh, UFAs for the Seahawks. Wagner's 33, and he's still a top 10 backer in the league. He recorded 130 tackles last season, second most in the league. I think Bobby Wagu leaves and plays for a contender though. Maybe the Niners who need Dre Greenlaw to heal up. Oh my God, Bobby Wagu and Fred Warner. The value backer, Josie Jewell. Uh, the Broncos, because of their cap situation, are gonna let him go. And he is absolutely going to a state with lax gun laws so he can do his signature celebration. Welcome to the Jaguars, Josie. And finally, there's a good amount of safeties that could become free agents. You got Tashawn Gibson, Micah Hyde, Eddie Jackson, and J. Ron Curse all rounding out the guys who are gonna be on the wrong side of 30. The best safety available, in my opinion, will also be the youngest. Ravens, Geno Stone. If the Lions can't keep CJ Johnson, I'd love to see them make a splash with Geno Schoen to shore up their secondary. Detroit has the cap space to add a couple dudes in free agency, so why not take a safety who had seven picks last year? Then there are other dudes, good dudes, Xavier McKinney, Kyle Duggar, Cameron Curl, Jeremy Chin, and they all might be available. And if I'm in need of a safety, I'm hoping the Patriots do not tag Kyle Duggar. Boom, there it is, your free agency primer. Let's see how many of these I got wrong in the coming week as everybody starts to get tagged. Please subscribe here on YouTube though. You know you want to. Come on, do it.